Up now, we're talking about building during the crypto winter. I'd like to invite onto the stage Rod Ambrizi, who is a documentary director and YouTube host for Dash Brazil. Can you please give him a very warm welcome to the stage? All right, for those uh, who doesn't know me, my name is Rod Ambrisi. Uh, I've been living with crypto or on crypto 100% for the past three and a half years. I'm a YouTuber for Dash Digital Cash in Portuguese for a brand new, for a brand new, new markets where uh, I run all the marketing for uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, podcast. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Johnny Dollar. My lecture was supposed to be yesterday. Uh, but there was some flight change. Johnny Dollar actually spoke on my place and I'm actually taking his position today. So thank you very much, Johnny Dollar. This is my YouTube channel and I want to talk a little bit about how we create content in a professional way where the main goal is to create professional news regarding interviewing the topest name in crypto in the world. And for those who doesn't know about Dash, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Dash ecosystem. Uh, comparing to Bitcoin, where uh, Bitcoin uh, the block reward, the miners get to keep 100% of the block reward. For Dash, it's divided into three different layers. The miners get to keep 45% of the new blocks generated. 45% goes to a secondary layer called the master node. And 10% goes to a treasury budget, which anybody can actually apply to get funds to sponsor your project. That's where I come in for the past two and a half years. I've been applying for funds to uh, the treasury in order to get funds to promote Dash in a brand new market in Latin America, more specific Brazil, for a Portuguese market. The official uh, uh, documentation and for the treasury, you can actually find at dashcentral.org. You can see all the budget, how much uh, uh, Dash is available, who is requesting what and what they're going to do with these extra funds that are automatically generated every single month. But one of the things that I want to mention about is how Dash is a self-sustained ecosystem network. While other projects during the building, during the, the crypto winter fail, Dash managed to stay and go through. So this 10% of the treasury for the past uh, uh, couple of years has been used to pay for developers, core team integration, partnerships, marketing, promotional materials, sport events, and sponsorship of athletes, uh, independent journalism, events, conference, even an airplane show. But then it came the crypto winter, where a lot of projects failed, disappeared, developers left, and nothing, nobody heard about those anymore. And that's where Dash succeed the most do, because of this structure, where you have three layers and 10% of every new token generated goes to the treasury to maintain the project running. So Dash took a, a big dive among with all the other altcoins, losing around 90% from its all-time high. But that's where we saw the power of the community and how the community came together in order to keep building during the hardest time, which has been the past two, two, uh, two, maybe two and a half years, right? So there's been a lot of pressure on the budget because once the Dash price went down, of course, there was not enough to pay for all those programs. The community auto-organized itself. We saw developers going back to work for free. We saw proposal owners like myself working three times more for way less money than before, right? We saw core team uh, restructure where they cut personnel, they kept key people, but in order to maintain the project growing, it shows, and most important, it shows how united the community was during the tough times. Um, to the point that even the CEO of the core team came up with the solution, maybe an idea, to change Dash from proof of work to proof of stake, where after some deep analysis, they noticed that uh, the miners had to dump all the coins they were mining at the time just to pay for electricity and update, upgraded their mining equipment, which also happened to uh, bring the price of Dash even lower. So this was actually uh, a, a, so not a solution, but another proposed idea 
where we saw how the community was trying as much as possible to keep the project up and running. Uh, one of the things that was very important during the crypto winter was the transparency of the people in charge of communication. So every week or every two weeks there was clear communication from uh, uh, the chief product owner and of course quarterly calls with the entire core team explaining to the investors, to the master node holders and of course to the dash holders. This is what happened. That's how seriously they took the project. It was not just some project that was abandoned during the crypto winter and people disappear. And if you're holding those tokens, you know, good luck. No, Dash kept as transparent as possible, giving all the information during the tough times. One of the things that happened as well, one of the proposal owners for Dash became a very toxic person. He wasn't very happy about uh, other proposal owners getting more money than him and not delivering as much as he was doing. So he became a toxic person inside the community, criticizing uh, key people, not doing exactly what he was supposed to. The network automatically reorganized and decided not to fund him anymore. And like any employee who gets fired from a job, he decided to put an official statement saying that Dash left Latin America and abandoned 80 people plus 11 countries. Which the media loves it. Cointelegraph saying Dash abandoned Latin America, CoinSpice. But what we learned from this is Dash was immune to bad system, to bad news. Because this did not affect the price at all. We had one player trying to denigrate the image of Dash and it didn't work. Of course. A couple of days later, all the community leaders from Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, we got in online and said, listen, we're all here. We're still working. Even though if there's no funds, we got to keep delivering because the community believes in the project. And this did pay off. So during the winter, Dash managed to uh, build the Dash platform with some very interesting innovation from identity and names, application data storage on a secondary layer. Uh, developer experience and user interface and experience and of course instant confirmation transactions this uh, uh, looking more like a PayPal system in order to improve mass adoption to make it as simple as possible for the average consumer to use it right there's a funny meme here from grandma you know getting all confused with the long uh, 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 alphanumeric 32 characters but you know soon very, very soon you'll be able to actually attach a name to your transaction so people can send crypto to your name, not to your address. But under the hood is still the alphanumeric address with the privacy and, and of course instant send as well. So application developers will be able to create on this secondary platform, the secondary layer, layer uh, uh, smart contracts like the dApps, the decentralized applications for dApps will allow any developers to create applications on top of the Dash network from smart contracts, even possibly uh, uh, tokens for STO. But this is for an for upcoming future where it will be up to the developers to create those decentralized applications on the top of the Dash network. During the crypto winter, Dash also built something called the chain locks. So Dash today is immune to the 51% attack, right? So for you to try to attack the Dash network today, you have to have control of 51% of the master nodes, plus 60% uh, of a secondary layer. Oh, sorry, 51% of the mining operation plus 60% of the master nodes, which will be an average of over $200 million to try to alter one block. So it makes Dash today immune to 51% attack. And thanks to that, of course, more partnerships and integration happen. Dash was that at Coinbase in the US, at uh, Binance US, who will be at, actually at a Dash pair as well. Uh, Whitebeat with Dash Instant Send. Dash was listed at uh, Crypto.com and other exchanges even have leverage for 50 times plus for traders to use at Binance. Big in Thailand, Bbox, Ptex.vip, and Genes in Australia as well. More and more integrations. 
Uh, Tauros, which is a Mexican exchange, just announced a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago, the integration with Dash and also allowing uh, individuals to buy Dash in over 11,000 ATMs in Mexico using their platform. So this is up and running now. There was two exchanges in Brazil, Coin uh, Trade CX.com and uh, Stratum.io that allows you to buy and sell Dash and other cryptos with no KYC. Those being one of the, the those being the two strongest exchange today in Latin America with uh, high volumes of Dash transaction. Continuous partnership of uh, 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 key uh, key players in the in the world of crypto like Uphold and Travala. I booked my entire trip to come here paying with Dash on Travala and also Cheap Air. As I said, I'm 100% in crypto. Uh, we have a, a Neptune Dash, a Canadian company who decided to invest in masternodes. Fidelity has a stake in this company. They went public in Canada and they're up 35% just in 2009, uh, 2020, plus the value of Dash among with the masternodes that they own. This is just a stock company that is backed by the masternode uh, network. So a couple of interesting numbers as well. From uh, Anypay, Dash has 65% transactions on their payment system comparing to Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, and daily active addresses for Dash, 81,000 comparing uh, uh, to Litecoin, 64,000. A lot of people don't know, but Dash is a fork of the technology of Litecoin and not Bitcoin. Uh, we saw also more integrations and partnerships in Thailand. There's the African community in Nigeria writing a book about uh, Dash, Dash Digital Cash and integrations and how they can use this on a daily basis. This has been highly used on third world countries. Of course, due to the hyperinflation and mismanage of government, at the failure of their government. Also, we just had a poll from uh, uh, Local Cryptos. If you're not aware, Local Cryptos is the second P2P marketplace in the world after local Bitcoins. They did a poll to see which token they should add next. Dash is leading by votes, so the entire community is pushing because they want to do more P2P tradings. We have the Dash Investment Fund, a group of highly uh, trained economic people that knows about investment decided to present a proposal, ask for funds from the, the treasurer and reinvest this money they're up 178% just uh, 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 this year, 2020. Trends uh, for Google search for Dash is skyrocket in Venezuela. Venezuela has been the biggest market adopting crypto uh, today on the planet. Last year, I, I talk here about my documentary that I shot in Venezuela. I'm gonna talk a little bit now. So today, Dash in January, those are numbers from the Google store. Dash has over 55,000 active wallets in Venezuela alone with daily transactions in or out of those wallets. We can monitor this on the blockchain, it's open for everybody. Integrations with Dash Text, which is a project they have in Venezuela, now expanding to other countries in Latin America, allowing people to send or receive Dash, but using a, a, not a smartphone, via text. Not a lot of people are able to buy a smartphone that costs 600,000 bucks in those third world countries. So they found a solution and Dash Text, it's been up and running. Dash Help, the central, uh, um, the customers, kind of a customer service where you can call to ask about how to download a wallet. If you have any doubts about setting up a wallet, backup your 12 phrase, your passwords and all that. Plus giving all the training information for the business, how to accept Dash. So this is happening. Uh, through crypto buyer Burger King in Venezuela accepts Dash now another partnership plus uh, the ATMs which allows people to buy and uh, to buy Dash use an ATM in Venezuela. Uh, we have Church Chicken that's actually very interesting. It's some sort of a KFC, the entire chain of uh, stores of uh, uh, restaurant food. I think it's 12 stores except Dash directly in Venezuela. Venezuela just happened to be the biggest market for crypto today dual through the hyperinflation. Plus, uh, the president is also talking about their own petrol. People get to know what's cryptocurrency and, uh, and, and wants to find out more. So allies for Dash Text and uh, CryptoWay with those integrations, allowing other countries in the region like Colombia, Chile, Brazil, 
to use those systems as well, especially on the remittances business where a lot of migrants from Venezuela are living in other countries and using crypto to send it back to their families. This is very interesting. There's uh, four parking systems in Venezuela at four different malls. Just two of those malls, they have two units of Electropades, a POS device that allows them to accept Dash's payment. They had over a thousand transactions per POS in the, in the past two months. That people go, that people that goes to the mall and that they paid for parking using Dash. And all this is open on the blockchain for people to check. A new system now, a new uh, delivery system in Venezuela where you can call and get your goods delivered and pay, of course, with Dash. Tons of meetups and events where people uh, sell goods directly with crypto. This happens uh, in Venezuela a couple weeks ago. But all this happens because of the educational program. People presenting proposals using those funds basically to teach people, organize meetups, show a different crowd how to download a wallet, how to back up your 12 uh, uh, phrase keys, how you're supposed to protect yourself from hyperinflation. It doesn't just happen overnight. And this is one of the pictures that I saw on Twitter as well. I have no idea who those people are, but they're organizing meetups on their own houses. They go house to house teaching people how to use. And at some point, once we're done with the crypto winter, the market goes up, or go back to all time high, the small dash holders on those third world countries will be the ones benefiting the most. These people, they don't care about trading. They don't want to buy low and sell high. They don't see crypto as investment. And crypto is not an investment. They're using crypto in a way to protect themselves against the government, the hyperinflation, and the current monetary system that they have in their countries. Uh, and the result of this, just in 2020, Dash is up 220%, I think even a little bit more now. But this is because during the crypto winter, we saw which project was still building, who was behind, the community, the usability, and the results are in. And there's much more uh, uh, to come. So uh, stay tuned for some news. And, and it's interesting that now Dash has been having the treasury system, the master node layer since 2015. And now we have uh, Bitcoin Cash trying to impose a fee to the miners to use this money to pay for development, something Dash that has been doing for already a couple of years. Zcash just approved 20% for uh, uh, infrastructure development. Litecoin suggests 1% donation. All those other projects struggled during the crypto winter because there was no funds, there was no donors. While Dash had the 10% up and running, and now we see other projects trying to follow the same path. The, the documentary that I shot in Venezuela is available on YouTube. It's called Venezuela and the Cryptocurrency Revolution. Take a look, it's only 25 minutes. It shows my experience living home, paying for my flight tickets, taxi, breakfast, lunch and dinner on different restaurants every single day for an entire week. In Venezuela, everything 100% with crypto. Uh, last year also, I went to, to Colombia and I shot the second documentary called Colombia and the Cryptocurrency Revolution, also on YouTube, also in English, where we show the, the community, the educational process, plus the migrants that are using crypto to send back to their families because those migrants, they don't want to send $100, $200, $1,000 back to their families. They're sending five, $10 uh, uh, cross-border payments. And that this Western Union and banking system does not allow. Venezuela, a monthly salary there is about three and a half dollars. So um, a Venezuelan migrant that's on, working in another country, he wants to send to his back, back to his family about $5 a week, a month or something like this. And with some, some other cryptos you can't because of the fees. Uh, plus the speed, banking system, forget about it. And uh, last year also I went to Switzerland and, and shot a different type of documentary, more focused on the bank system and the government in a partnership with 88 InsurTech and the Switzerland Global Enterprise, where um, I interview a bunch of top key players in Switzerland uh, talking about crypto, where today the government in Switzerland plus the banking system are saying, Come to us, set up your business here. We'll give you all the proper tools and everything. 
And of course, Dash has uh, his uh, 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 one of the core team members participating as well on the documentary. And uh, one of the guys, the first on the top there, he's the guy who did the Ethereum ICO and he tells the story how the guys from Ethereum went to his office in 2013, talked to him about blockchain, had no idea, and today his law firm is one of the leading ones uh, regarding cryptocurrency. Official website for Dash is dash.org. Once again, everybody, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate being here too. I'll see you later.